just when you thought it was safe to go back in the water. There it is, Amelia's Weekly Fish Fry, brought to you by eejournal.com. I'm Amelia Dalton, your captain of this here seafarin' and shark fearin' podcast. What do 3D printing and great white sharks have in common? This week's episode of Amelia's Weekly Shark Fry, of course. (laughs) My guest this week is Rich Stump from Fathom, and we're talking about how Fathom is working with the Monterey Bay Aquarium Research Institute to create 3D printed video tracking devices for great white sharks in the California coastal region. Really, you guys, I have the best job in the world. (laughs) Let's go. Hi, Rich. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thanks, Emilio. It's great to be with you. So first, Rich, give my audience a quick recap on what Fathom is all about. So Fathom is a company based in the Bay Area focused on changing the way that companies are designing and developing their products using technology. We founded the company in 2008 around exploring new technologies to change the way that we're designing and making things. So the technologies in the product development landscape has changed drastically over just the last 10 years or so. And there's a great opportunity to use new technologies and new processes to do things differently. And so we started with the technology of additive manufacturing or 3D printing, and we have since brought on new technologies to help customers really do things differently. And so we have two production centers, one in Oakland, California, and one in Seattle. And we have about 36 large industrial 3D printers ranging in seven different technologies, as well as traditional manufacturing tools like injection molding and CNC machining. And, you know, like I said earlier, we're all about exploring these new processes, new materials, and new ideas to allow our customers to really push the envelope of how they're developing and making their products. So you guys recently got involved with the Great White Shark Cafe Challenge. So first off, tell my audience a little bit about the background of this challenge and what issues you guys were trying to help solve. Yeah, so we worked with Monterey Bay Aquarium Research Institute, and I did not know this before we started working with these folks, but apparently there's this phenomenon called the Shark Cafe. And when the sharks migrate from... California down to Hawaii every year. They stop thousands of miles off the coast in this area that they have deemed called the Shark Cafe. They do some interesting behaviors that the scientists are trying to figure out why and and what they're doing thousands of miles off the coast. I guess they swim up and down from the the bottom of the ocean to the top of the surface and they act in this weird behavior. And so it's always been this mystery on what the sharks are actually doing out in the shark cafe. So the folks at Monterey Bay Aquarium Research Institute wanted to try to solve this mystery. They developed like a Fitbit-like device that attaches to the sharks. It's actually a more complex engineering problem than you may think to develop a device that will locate and travel with the shark thousands of miles off the coast and then turn on with a camera and detect the speed and the temperature of the water and all these attributes that scientists are trying to capture to figure out what the sharks are actually doing out in the shark cafe. So they came to us with a design. It was basically similar to a Fitbit, but you know, obviously larger with a camera and other devices to capture the data they needed to. And we used one of our new 3D printing technologies to make the housings for this device. The technology that we have, it's called the Continuous Build Demonstrator. And it's made by a company called Stratasys. This demonstrator is actually a new manufacturing concept that we're using as a beta in our Oakland, California production center. And the concept behind this machine is it has racks of printers that are manufacturing cells, printing 3D printed parts all at the same time. So what happens is we take a part. So when Monterey Bay Aquarium Research Institute sent us this housing, we send it into the cloud. And that part is then sent to these manufacturing cells. Picture like a server rack with a number of printers stacked on top of each other in a server rack. And these printers just continuously print these parts until your order is done. So when the part is finished, in this technology, it's using what we call fused deposition modeling or FDM. And what happens is a a plastic is in a filament, picture like a weed whacker type filament that is fed into a print head that is like a precise hot glue gun layering the part down layer by layer, almost growing it in a sense in the vertical or what we call the Z axis. And so as the part is building, it finishes 
and the door of the printer opens up in the front. It spits the part out of the front of the machine. It cuts what we call a build sheet, which is the substrate that the part builds on top of, and it goes into a bucket, and it puts the part number. It prints the part number on that substrate. So what this allows us to do is print parts continuously and not have to use as much labor, which allows us to drop the price and automate the process to the customer. So it, it makes 3D printing more economical for customers to do. And so for this opportunity, the guys at MBARI sent us the housings for this device, and we printed it on this continuous build demonstrator and shipped them the parts. They assembled the electronics, and then off they went to try to solve the Shark Cafe mystery with their device. So have you guys heard any more about the outcome of the Shark Cafe challenge? Uh, do researchers know more because of your devices? So, you know, we recently had Shark Week, which was kind of great timing on all this. And I'm a shark enthusiast myself. And so I was watching many of the episodes and, and the Shark Cafe actually came up in multiple episodes in the course of the week. And so obviously I, I gained more interest in this whole mystery and how we related here at Fathom to hopefully solving this. So currently they're trying to track these sharks and, and the devices are capturing data. So I think, you know, in the next month or so, we should know more. So I haven't heard specifically back, but I think they're pretty confident that we'll figure out what these sharks are doing out in this mysterious area. The one thing I forgot to mention that I think is interesting also is thousands of miles off the coast, there's no, there's not a lot of vegetation in the ocean out there. And so they're even more curious. There's not much for the sharks to eat. They're not sure if they're mating or what they're doing out there. So it, it even makes it more mysterious that there's not a lot of things going on that far off in the ocean and, and why these sharks hang out there for so long and do these interesting behaviors. So this seems like a really interesting application for 3D printing and your guys' proprietary technologies. But do you see this type of 3D printing, not necessarily sharks maybe, but are new things happening in 3D printing along these lines? Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, that's what we're really passionate about here at Fathom is looking at these new technologies to change the way that products are being designed and manufactured. And 3D printing or additive manufacturing is a huge driver in that. A lot of people ask me oftentimes, is 3D printing going to take away the way we've made products for all these years? Is it going to replace jobs? Is it going to replace CNC machining or injection molding or these legacy manufacturing methods? And when I answer that, I said, no, absolutely not. It's actually going to enhance or make the world a better place by allowing us a new tool set to change the way that we're doing things. So it'll drive more customized products. So at some point in the future, we're going to have localized factories that will have printers and traditional manufacturing, along with obviously expertise of people to drive these factories. And so no longer will all the products be made overseas. They'll be made local to you and they'll, they'll have a custom element to them. So, you know, whether it's a different color or it has a different shape to match your body or whatever it may be, it's custom to the end customer. And that could be you as a consumer or that could be a B2B type of application. And that's what we've seen really over the last five years is companies adopt 3D printing and other technologies with new materials that have come out, new processes that have come out. It opens up all these applications, which can solve problems that we've never been able to solve before because you can print anything that you can imagine. So the shapes that you can print are endless. There's no limitation to the types of shapes you can print. So that allows you to solve some interesting problems. So yeah, I think what work we're doing at Fathom, we're really changing the landscape of how we're designing and making products and 3D printing will have a major role in that. Okay, Rich, let's circle back to sharks for a second. Now, I love sharks, and I think I'm a bit scared of them, and that maybe enhances my love or obsession with them. Uh, what is it about sharks that you especially dig? You know, I think for me personally, I share that passion with you, and I think that passion is driven by a, a fear element, um, of course. I grew up in San Diego surfing as a kid, and I would see actually a fair amount of sharks, not great whites or, you know, other types of dangerous sharks, but I would see, you know, reef sharks and other things swim around the ocean. And I was fascinated about these creatures and kind of the mysterious way about them. So I think getting involved in a project like this for me personally is just really exciting because growing up as a kid and, and being in the ocean a lot and surfing and the whole element of surfers and sharks and that dynamic is one that I think is very intriguing and interesting. So, you know, even the movie Jaws and growing up around that is 
it all kind of adds together for this whole shark story, I think, for a lot of us. So I share that passion with you, and I, and I hope that this project we worked on with the Monterey Bay Aquarium Research Institute will really help solve this mystery. I think it would be a really fun kind of end to the story. Absolutely. I think that's true. Well, I think that's all I have time for today. Darn it. Uh, thank you so much for joining me, Rich. This was super interesting. Thanks for having me. It was really great to talk to you today. If you want any further information about this super cool new use for 3D printed materials, a blog post about Fathom's journey into the Great Shark Cafe, or even more information about the Monterey Bay Aquarium's Research Institute's new project in fitness monitors for jellyfish, spoiler alert, suction cups and surgical glue are key. I've included a couple links below the player on this week's fish frying page on eejournal.com. Maybe you aren't creating super cool new 3D printed devices to track the migration patterns of great white sharks. But if you're listening to this here podcast, you may be developing mill standard systems and you're worried about swap C. I know, really. Who isn't? (laughs) And you undoubtedly know that getting a reliable off-the-shelf DC to DC converter and filter are critical to the success of your system. In a recent episode of Chalk Talk entitled New Defense and Aerospace Products, I sit down with Kai Johnstad of Vicor and talk about solving mill standard COTS power problems. We've got you covered, my friends. And if this sounds like something you might be interested in, you can check out this episode of Chalk Talk by clicking the link below the player on this week's fish frying page on eejournal.com. You can also check out the Chalk Talk section of eejournal.com or head on over to YouTube, keyword eejournal. Hey, have you checked out EE Journal on social media yet? Well, you should. You can find us at facebook.com slash EE Journal. If you're into Twitter, you can check out our tweets at EE Journal TFM. And hey, if LinkedIn is more your thing, well, sure, you can follow us on LinkedIn as well. And we have that YouTube channel I mentioned earlier, keyword EE Journal. It is chock full of all kinds of techie videos, which also includes our very popular Chalk Talk webcast series. And you can subscribe to our EE Journal YouTube channel as well. I'm just saying. (laughs) Also, by clicking the links below the player on this week's Fish Frying page, you can grab our Fish Frying RSS feed or subscribe to Fish Fry via the iTunes store. And remember, if you want any further information about the stories covered in today's show, as always, just head on over to eejournal.com and look for this week's Fish Frying page. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. If you know of any cool new technology, any fun EE conference coming up that I absolutely should attend, or even the best geeky hotspot in your city, shoot me a line at amelia at eejournal.com or post a comment on our forums on EE Journal. For the week of August 25th, 2017, I'm Amelia Dalton, and you've been fried.